The Singapore government says latest measures to tighten home loans and ensure prudent borrowing are needed to safeguard home buyers in this rising interest rate environment. Responding to questions in Parliament about housing affordability, National Development Minister Desmond Lee says that if the government doesn't act now, people may default on their mortgage payments and run into housing difficulties. Rebecca Mateo with this report. The HDB resale market has been getting hotter and hotter, driven by higher demand during the pandemic and low interest rates for nearly a decade. To cool the market, the government last week introduced a slate of new measures to tighten the maximum amount that can be taken for flat loans, set higher interest floor rates and introduce a wait-out period of 15 months for private homeowners buying resale flats. This measure aims to moderate demand and slow the momentum of price increases in the HDB resale market. By deferring demand from private property owners, we intend for this measure to be temporary and will review this depending on overall demand and market changes. This follows an earlier round of cooling measures introduced last year. Still, the HDB resale price index increased by 5.3% in the first half of this year, raising concerns about whether public housing is still affordable for Singaporeans. The government will intervene and do what is necessary to ensure a stable property market and affordable public housing for Singaporeans. This has been our approach all along. We will do so decisively, but also carefully, being cognizant of the uncertain global economic outlook and rising interest rate environment, which will affect home prices and contribute to uncertainty in our property market. We will continue to monitor the market closely and adjust our policies as necessary on both housing demand and supply to ensure that prices move broadly in line with economic fundamentals. For first-time buyers, National Development Minister Desmond Lee explained how different home buyers with different household incomes can service their loans. He says for a family earning $5,000 looking to buy a four-room flat in a non-mature estate, they can get $45,000 in grants and need to fork out 23% of their monthly income for their loan. A couple earning $6,500 can get $30,000 and will need to spend about 18% of their monthly income. For both the households, their flat will cost about four to five times their annual household incomes. Mr Lee says this home price to income ratio is still lower than in other cities like Hong Kong, which can be more than 20 times that of annual household incomes. He adds that the government is committed to keeping public housing affordable and accessible to meet housing aspirations of Singaporeans and that helping Singaporeans own their home is a key national priority. MPs asked about the 100,000 new flats that are planned over the next few years and how they would meet demand. Another asked if it was possible to raise property taxes, including additional buyer's stamp duty to further moderate demand. Will the government consider increasing property tax rates for non-owner occupied properties? Second, will the government consider higher ABSD for those who buy more than one property in Singapore, especially for foreigners? Thank you. We generally don't discuss any impending or upcoming measures relating to the property market uh, in order not uh, to cause people to read or misread signals. So generally, all these ideas have been raised before, uh, different ways in which we uh, uh, tax properties, tax uh, rental income, uh, increase ABSD. We have to look at uh, the housing market, look at what drives uh, demand, uh, look at whether it is in line with economic fundamentals and decide what necessary measures need to be taken, and if so, when. There will be a ramp up in demand at the rate of, uh, uh, at the amount of 100,000 uh, new flats uh, for, from 2021 to 2025. And I think uh, MND, of course, must have done some modelling in terms of demand and supply forecast. Now, what is the meaning of this 100,000 new flats? Uh, will it be able, what is, uh, versus what is the demand uh, that is being forecasted for each year and how does that then um, um, meet or mitigate the, the, the challenges that we face in, in meeting the needs of especially first-time families and, and others.
Well, we keep track of the demand of, for housing, both in terms of the application rates, but we also look at uh, household formation rates, we look at uh, uh, marriage rates, we look at demographic trends. Uh, in terms of housing supply for BTO, we know that uh, we have allocation of quota for different segments, for example, first-timers. Most recently, in the August uh, BTO exercise, uh, we ramped up the quota available to first-time flat buyers in non-mature estates, as my colleague Minister Indrani Raja had said. Uh, the 100,000 flats, uh, if supply, if the demand persists, will be able uh, to meet much of this demand. But remember that uh, HGB BTO flats are not the only source of housing. There's, of course, also the HGB resale market as well as the private property market. The Housing Development Board doesn't make money from selling flats, including those at an upcoming Ang Mo Kio development that raised eyebrows due to its price. Now, instead, the Central Weave project will incur a net loss of $270 million. That clarification was made by Minister Desmond Lee, and it comes after chatter about the nearly $900,000 asking price for a five-room unit at the project. Mr Lee told Parliament that the estimated land cost for the project is about $500 million. Now, this is a figure determined independently using market valuation principles. Since land forms part of the past reserves, the money paid must be returned and cannot be used as revenue for spending in the budget. Mr Lee says HDB does not price new flats based on cost. When pricing new flats, HDB first establishes their market value by considering the prices of comparable resale flats nearby, as well as the individual attributes of the flats and prevailing market conditions. To derive the selling prices, HDB applies a significant subsidy to the assessed market values to ensure that new flats are affordable to those buying their first home. Mr Lee says HDB incurs a significant deficit every year as the amount it collects from selling flats is far less than its building costs and housing grants. For example, it recorded a deficit of $3.85 billion for its home ownership prog program for the 2021 to 2022 financial year. The average deficit incurred in the last three years was about $2.7 billion annually. Now, subsidized housing loans for lower income citizens and allowing people to refinance their home loans to concessionary rates offered by HDB. These were among suggestions from MP Saktiandi Supat, who raised his concerns about the threat of rising interest rates, particularly on vulnerable people and businesses. US mortgage rates have already hit 6% for the first time since 2018, uh, since 2008. Sorry. So, does the government have any contingency plans in place? Will MES consider implementing temporary measures such as rate ceilings to ensure that rates do not spiral out of control and become unaffordable? On public housing, the government will continue to sell new flats at prices below market value with significant housing subsidies. The end in mind is to encourage home ownership and to enable as many, as many families as possible to own their homes. We will continue to monitor the property market and review our policies where necessary in a rising interest rate environment. We will also work with financial and non-financial institutions to better help borrowers understand their loan commitments. Mr Supat also suggested that the government take a targeted sector-specific approach to help industries like construction and manufacturing, which are more sensitive to interest rate hikes and could see their loan repayments surge. To prevent a hard landing from steep hikes in the cost of capital, our SMEs will need some support in transitioning to have enough reaction time to adjust their plans for cash flow, servicing existing debt and taking on new debt. Our economic agencies have assessed that there are available credit facilities for businesses. SME loan volumes, for example, have continued to be stable in recent months. With the expiry of the temporary bridging loan program, enterprises can still tap on the enterprise financing scheme, which supports access to financing for a wide range of business activities.